interest rates, car prices, and the cost of living. All three of these things are extremely high, like really high. And yet people continue to buy cars, which is quite honestly just crazy. Well, just this week, many automakers published their Q2 sales data. And today we're going to be going over this. And we're also going to be talking about what this means for you, the car buyer. So let's get started. Now, keep in mind that this is specifically new car sales data from Q2 of 2023, so the quarter that just ended. We don't have the earnings reports from these companies quite yet. That's going to be coming later on this month. And we also don't have used car data, which should be coming here in a few days. So this is specifically new car sales data. We don't have revenue or profit figures quite yet. So keep that in mind as we're going through this data. In Q2, it's estimated that 4.1 million vehicles were sold, which is up 13.2% from Q1 of this year and 15.3% in Q2 of last year. That's across the entire automotive industry, but let's actually break this down by brand and let's start with some of the big winners. Tesla and General Motors were the real winners of the automotive industry. General Motors sold 691,978 vehicles, which is up 19% year over year. According to GM, all of their brands delivered double digit year over year increases in the second quarter. Tesla, on the other hand, produced and delivered a record number of cars for the company. Tesla produced 19,489 Model X and Model X vehicles, and they delivered 19,225 units. While on the other hand, they produced 460,211 Model 3 and Model Y vehicles, and delivered 446,915 units, which is an absolutely huge number. Tesla really has been producing vehicles at a significantly faster rate, and it's definitely reflecting in these delivery and production numbers. And I always find it really interesting whenever we dig into Tesla numbers, because I always forget that the Tesla Model S and Model X are produced in such smaller quantities compared to the Model 3 and the Model Y. Now, don't get me wrong, obviously the Model 3 and the Model Y are Tesla's more mainstream models, while the X and the S are their higher end, less produced ones. But I actually didn't realize that Tesla is producing so significantly more Model 3s and Model Ys than the Model S and Model X. And I was surprised to see the extreme discrepancies between these models and their production numbers. Now, we don't know the financial figures for Tesla in Q2 of this year, but we do know based off of Q1 data that Tesla's margin has fallen significantly and their overall profit has also fallen. But based off of production and delivery numbers, which we do know not only for Q2, but also Q1, we know that Tesla has been increasing their production and their deliveries by an astronomical amount which is, in my opinion, a great sign for the company, even if their margin is declining in the process. Because let's face it, everyone's margin is declining by a bit. We're seeing this company after company. And this is an obvious sign that Tesla price cuts are working. Tesla cut their prices in order to stir up demand, and that's exactly what's happening. As for Ford, their Q2 sales estimate was 523,717 vehicles, which would put them up about 9% year over year. But according to Ford's recently released results, they sold 531,662 vehicles, which is up 10% year over year and is up more than 12% since the Q1 of 2023. And the best part is Ford actually gave us some interesting context into what these sales actually included. And according to Ford, their internal combustion engine sales grew 10%, which is predominantly due to their accelerating truck sales. Hybrid vehicle sales climbed 15.7% year over year, but Ford's electric vehicle unit actually fell 2.8% year over year, with the F-150 Lightning seeing a 4% increase from Q1 of this year, but the Mustang Mach-E saw a whopping 21% decline since Q1, and the E-Transit van saw a 23.8% decline. And while Mach-E sales were actually up in June, they were still down for the quarter. Ford, GM, and Tesla are definitely the big winners when it comes to manufacturer performance, but they aren't the only brands that I want to talk about. Over the last quarter, Honda saw an increase of 44% in vehicle production. And while the production increase of 44% sounds like a great number, it actually isn't as good as you may think because of the fact that Honda, as well as a number of other overseas brands, have really been struggling with inventory and production over the last couple of years. And so as a result of this, production is very, very low and it is slowly but surely beginning to ramp up. So while 44% increase is a lot, it actually is lower than what analysts were expecting. Stellantis, so the company behind Jeep, Dodge, Ram, and more, saw a 6% increase year over year, increasing from 368,237 units in Q1 of this year, compared to 433,992 units in Q2 of this year. 
A solid performance, but similar to Honda, it is slightly down from analyst expectations. And unfortunately, the big loser here, at least when it comes to year-over-year -year growth, is my beloved brand, Toyota. Toyota sales estimates for Q2 were at 555,402 vehicles, which would place them about 4.6% above where they were a year ago, where in reality, Toyota sold 568,962 vehicles, which is higher than expectations, but is still lower, at least on a percentage basis, compared to some other brands. Similar to Honda, Toyota has had a lot of issues with production over the last couple of years, and this is definitely reflecting in their sales volume. Now, as I'm recording this video again, we don't know all of the data from Q2 or from June. Used car data should be released in a few days, and earnings will be released periodically throughout this month, which I will, of course, make videos on. But to give you a refresher, we began May with 1.96 million in total new car inventory available, 55 days worth of inventory available, and the average new vehicle listing was $47,172. You can also see inventory data here with Toyota and Honda being the big losers when it comes to inventory and Jeep, Ram, and Infiniti being the big winners, with Jeep really quite ahead of the competition. Now, when it comes to what sales data means to you as a buyer, it doesn't mean a whole lot, to be honest. Vehicle production, sales, and inventory is, of course, up year over year. We have to keep in mind that whenever we look at this data, we are still comparing it to a weird time in history, especially whenever we talk about the context of the car market. Car prices, inventory, production, it was all skewed and not normal even this time last year. So whenever we look at data today, we compare it to data this time last year, it really just doesn't paint the full picture. So if I was a car buyer today, I probably wouldn't pay a whole lot of attention to sales data. Instead, what I would look at is inventory data, because I do think that that has a heavy impact on you, the car buyer. And this, of course, does have a trickle-down effect to how many cars different manufacturers are selling. The more cars a manufacturer is able to sell, that in turn means they had more inventory to sell, which means their production is semi-back to normal. This would be brands like Stellantis, but it would also be brands like GM or Ford. So brands like Jeep, for example, are able to produce a lot more cars than competitors, which means that if you are somebody who wants to buy a Jeep, now could potentially be a good time because they have a lot of inventory and that means you may be able to negotiate. Ford and GM are kind of right in the middle of the pack, which means that you could buy these cars today and get a decent price, but it probably isn't the best time either. While manufacturers like Honda and Toyota are having a tough time with inventory and production, and they are simply lagging behind whenever it comes to the competition. This means that if I was somebody who was wanting to buy a Toyota, I would probably hold off on making that purchase because inventory levels are increasing the cost of these cars and it's making negotiating off of the price of these vehicles extremely difficult. And so because of all of this, if you are somebody who's looking to buy either a used or a new car, I would probably steer clear of these brands that have extreme inventory issues. Well, I would probably specifically focus on the ones that are doing quite well with inventory. Again, you can see the graph here, which shows exactly what I'm talking about. But there you have it, the most up-to-date sales data for a slew of different brands. Again, we should have used car data here in a few days, and we will begin to see earnings calls throughout the rest of this month. I will be making videos as that new data and those calls are released. But like always, you guys, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.